this video has nothing to do with the comedy show that this channel was intended for. And although I'm still walking away from this art project for reasons I had explained in my last video, it is absolutely crucial that I address the riots literally tearing down our nation. Because I know the real reasons for why they are happening, and not the lies that most have been led to believe. These riots have nothing to do with Floyd. They have nothing to do with police brutality, or racial injustice, or white supremacy, or any other bullshit you've been told. Now I know that many, if not most, of these participants are motivated by these stated reasons, but the architects involved have a very sinister ulterior motive. What I mean by architects is that these riots are not an organic, spontaneous mob response. I received word that these riots were being planned for the summer of 2020 from at least two years ago. I just didn't know that the plan would take effect so soon and I'm absolutely stunned by how well orchestrated and successful it has been thus far. This is not a scenario where Black Lives Matter are an innocent protest group and their legitimacy is being tarnished by Antifa interlopers. The BLM protests are being used to shield groups like Antifa to strike from, but the leaders are complicit in this. Since 2004, Black Lives Matter has done nothing to improve racial justice. Wherever they went, looting and rioting always followed, and black communities were left smoldering in their wake, never to recover. There is a logical reason for this, and there is a logical reason for why there are videos of rioters receiving payment to destroy property and attack bystanders, and why there are videos of bricks, weapons, and gasoline being made readily available for rioters the night prior. There is a reason why establishment media outlets have been constantly fabricating stories of blacks being victimized by racist white cops years before Floyd's death. And there is a reason why Democrat mayors and governors are ordering police to stand down just to allow white, black, Asian, Indian, and Hispanic businesses alike to burn all over this nation. The true purpose for these riots is to further the social dissolution and the economic collapse of the United States, continuing from where the draconian COVID lockdown left off. I will not provide concrete evidence for this. I will not take any whistleblowing risk. I'm just a nobody with meager means and with a family to care for. What I will provide you is a tip. I'll leave for those who are willing to engage in some investigative journalism, and if you're not equipped or willing to embark on such a task, then at least share my message far and wide as possible, so that one capable to do so can hear it. Research the organizations involved in these riots. To say that they are well-funded is a phenomenal understatement. Pockets of their backers run so deep that it is ridiculous to even think that they're a group of grassroots working-class underdogs. They say they are fighting the system, yet their cash flow comes straight from the top. Follow the money trail. It will lead to China, or at the very least, powerful individuals with close business ties to Chinese government. In fact, China and their multinational financial affiliates have been funding the entire social justice movement for the last 12 years, and that's far as I'm aware. China has been preparing for the last 30 years to replace the United States as the world hegemony, both politically and economically. But they cannot defeat the U.S. militarily. Even if China were to win an all-out war, the victory would be a pyrrhic one. The attrition would financially cripple both sides, and it would leave the world in an unpredictable power vacuum, which would hinder all plans for a new world order for several generations afterwards. China's best strategy is to defeat their most powerful competitor without firing a single shot. The best method for this strategy is one that communists have perfected throughout the last century. Cultural subversion. Destabilize a nation and their army will soon follow. The most powerful war machines will quickly crumble into piles of rust, as was evident in the Soviet Union just before their death rose. The entire social justice movement from the last decade and a half, not just Antifa, every single progressive activist movement, no matter the cause, no matter which demographic they pretend to represent, be it Black Lives Matter, Extinction Rebellion, La Raza, GLAAD, Femin, March for Our Lives, they're either astroturfed or they've been infiltrated and redirected to serve the interests of China and her globalist partners. 
If you don't believe me, then answer me this. If these organizations are so apparently anti-establishment, then why are their actions openly supported by the billionaire classes they supposedly oppose? If these organizations are so well diverse, then why do they all share the same communist goals? A censored, disarmed, economically stratified, thought police citizenry with no value in God or family or tradition. Just a centralized authority to replace all three. And not just any communist proposal, but specifically resembling the current Chinese model. This is no mere coincidence. China and her globalist affiliates have been funding the professors teaching social justice curriculums in every college and university. They own the lion's share of the establishment media, as well as every major social media platform, to disseminate fabricated social inequality narratives and to slander any opposition to the plan. And they have so many corrupt politicians in their back pocket, from local to the federal. The ultimate goal for the social justice movement is not to promote justice, nor equality, nor fairness, nor freedom. It's to promote social discord throughout the entire modernized Western world, so that no nation will be strong enough to oppose the upcoming new world order, with China acting as its police apparatus. Do you understand now why the clown world memes are so effective? Why nothing the left has ever said in over 10 years has been either true or even sound sane. It's because it was never meant to. It was meant to confuse, disorient, and ultimately isolate the populace. And how the fuck do I know all this, you may ask? A long time ago, was once a member of Antifa. I left long ago, but not on bitter terms, and they know nothing of my political transformation. In fact, I am still close to a few high-profile active members. And even though I hate their group to the core now, I guess human love is far more complicated than one can imagine. 20 years ago, I was as radically leftist as one could get. I was young, hormonally led, wanting to lash out at the world for whatever self-loathing and inadequacies I had yet to realize about myself, let alone cope with. And I was completely stupid to how the adult world really worked. I had no dependents to look out for, nor had I worked hard to own anything of notable value. So what the fuck did I know? What the fuck did I stand to lose by pursuing such adolescent utopian goals? Though much of the movement has remained the same since I was a member, there is one very important difference between my generation and today's. Back in my day, during the last years of the Clinton presidency and all the way through George Bush II's reign, we spent most of our activism standing side by side with labor unions, libertarians, even conservative constitutionalists to protest the gatherings of the IMF and the G Summit meetings. We were a motley bunch of various activists with sometimes very opposing political views, but we all stood together for one cause. None of us wanted the world to be ruled by a handful of bankers. We didn't focus on racism, nor sexism, nor sexuality, nor any of these meaningless distinctions that would have created crippling schisms between working class factions. We weren't about to allow ourselves to be divided and conquered like that. We were up against a very powerful force as it was. We were anti-globalist at the time, because we knew what kind of authority was poised to unite the world. And let me tell you something, my millennial and Zoomer listeners. It wasn't anything John Lennon imagined. But then, something changed. Back in 2008, during Occupy Wall Street, it was then that I had realized that our entire collective social movement united to fight any global corporatocracy. It had been compromised. It is then that they introduced the progressive stack. The progressive stack divided us into some privilege measuring caste system based on race, gender, sexuality, and every other tripe distinction. This was the official birth of the AstroTurf social justice movement 
that has been plaguing us ever since. Not only had our unity been dissolved into identitarian groups competing for the right to speak above everyone else based solely upon being the most oppressed, yet never explaining why or how. But our once mutually agreed upon enemy was no longer the elite financial class. From there on out, it was now straight white men. This was calculated. Not only to cause diversion among us, not only to divert attention away from our real enemy, but to turn the mob against the most powerful enemy of the New World Order. Straight white men were once the biggest obstacle against the globalist agenda, both economically and philosophically speaking. Just do the fucking research yourselves. Demographically speaking, and especially during the time when the social justice psyop was enacted, straight white men were the most libertarian, the biggest supporters of limited government, the most educated in libertarian philosophy and constitutional rights, the biggest supporters of free speech, the largest defenders of the Second Amendment, the largest group of those independently wealthy and economically self-reliant, making them the greatest opponents of communism and the welfare state, both of which, historically speaking, were tools used by tyrants to enslave the masses. And here's the greatest irony of all, and I know many of you will refuse to believe it, but it's a goddamn fact. During the time when the social justice bullshit began, 12 years ago, white nationalism was at an all-time low. When I was an activist, we did have our dealings with the occasional skinhead or neo-Nazi punk, but they were a fucking joke. They were just a laughable few. In fact, at the time, there were more black, Asian, and Hispanic members within their own supremacist groups than white ones. And if night white nationalism is on the rise now, well, what the fuck did you expect? They're being used as a diversionary scapegoat against those who seek to oppress us all. Antifa, the group that I once was affiliated with 20 years ago, who stood alongside with conservative libertarian patriots at the 1999 Battle of Seattle, have now for the last four years been used as shock troops and goon squads by the globalist elite we once fought against in order to quell populist nationalist rallies held by the very same libertarians and constitutionalists we once stood with. And the gravest point in all of this, the patriots that the elites are now slandering as white nationalists are the only ones left standing for true national sovereignty. The only ones left standing against this new world order. A Chinese-style socialist oppression for the masses and corporate kleptocracy for the elites. Why is it that it's only the majority of whites who are fighting against global tyranny now? Why is it that the majority of every other race has been fooled into supporting it by only caring about their own in multiracial societies? There is no white male patriarchy. It doesn't fucking exist. You've been hoodwinked. And if you're about to retort to me that the financial elite scheming for Chinese hegemony are mostly straight white men, you are wrong. They come from all walks of life, but a majority of them are in fact Jewish. This is not a testament to the NWO being Zionist in scope, but it does make woke theories about Nazis oppressing you rather fucking stupid. This non-stop, Open hatred for working class Americans and whites in general is so misguided and quite frankly, suicidally stupid because they've been suffering along with everyone else this whole time. The white working class never fully recovered when their manufacturing jobs relocated to China in the 1990s. The elite classes who transformed China into the manufacturing center of our present globalized economy at the devastating expense of the American middle class, mind you, were the very same ones who for several decades financed corrupt politicians in the United States, both neoliberals and the neoconservatives alike, who would distract us with theatrical debates over trivial social issues like gay marriage and flag burning every election cycle for 30 fucking years. Yet both parties would fall in lockstep time and time again to unanimously vote for free trade agreements and foreign wars of which only created more debt and suffering for the American people, 
whites included, and only benefited their globalist campaign donors. Now that the United States is almost financially used up, and too many within our military have been proven too unreliable to enact orders that would violate the U.S. Constitution, you know, that pesky document getting in the way of their projected maximized profits, China is now their golden child, and they are ready to take over. If you still don't believe me, then answer me this. You're allowed to scream all you want about climate change when you think Whitey's doing it. But China is the greatest polluter of the world. Yet no one seems to care. Why is that? You're allowed to scream about Nazis all you want. But China has adopted Nazi-like practices of locking up the Uyghur minority in concentration camps. Yet no one seems to care. Why is that? You're allowed to scream about the evils of white supremacy all you want, but China has incorporated Chinese supremacy into their communist ideology. And you should hear how they truly feel about the darkest skin races. Yet no one seems to care. Why is that? You're allowed to scream against the evils of white Western capitalism all you want, but China has become one of the greatest economic superpowers in the world by literally allowing these very same capitalist firms to exploit the labors of our own citizens to the fullest extent, yet no one seems to care. Why is that? China purposely allowed the coronavirus to spread across the world because they wanted their economic competitors to be equally handicapped. And there were many officials in China's pockets that allowed their borders to remain open for this end. After the pandemic succeeded, they then enacted a lockdown that would intentionally tank the local economies in order to give China enough time to recover. And if you want proof of this, just know that while millions became immediately unemployed and thousands upon thousands of small upstart businesses were destroyed, white, black, Hispanic, Indian, Asian alike, those few multinational corporations that were allowed to stay open not only experienced some of their highest growth ever, during this crisis, but all of them shared close business ties to China. Does this sound like a fucking mere coincidence to you? Seriously, if you really think you're being oppressed, living in a majority white Western society that everyone in the whole goddamn world seems to be desperately scrambling to move into, just you wait. When the Pax Americana finally ends and a constitution that universally guarantees civil rights to all citizens is nullified and China becomes the newest big boy in the block. If the value of a Chinaman's life in China herself is worth almost next to nothing, just what kind of chance for a better life do you think you'll have? Please, for the love of God, share this message.